In today's video, I'll be showing you how to optimize Windows to help boost Vanguard's performance and increase the frame rate you're getting in game. And not only that, once we have finished optimizing Windows, we will then boot up Vanguard and I'll go through a few different graphic settings that you can change that will also help improve the performance and FPS. So by following all the steps that I'll show you in this video, by the end of the video, you will hopefully see an increase in the frame rate that you're getting. But before we get started, if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos on how you can boost FPS in other games and also fix problems that you might be having with other games as well, as we do lots of different videos covering all these things. So the first thing you need to do is ensure Windows is up to date. So the same methods do apply for both Windows 10 and Windows 11. I will be showing you how to do the steps in Windows 10, but it's very similar in Windows 11. So we now need to right click on the start menu icon and you then need to click onto settings. You now need to click onto update and security. And you now need to click on check for updates button. If Windows does detect any new updates, you then need to allow Windows to download and install these updates. And once it's finished, go ahead and restart your computer. Also, while you're on this page, if you do have an option for few optional updates, click onto this button and then click onto drivers. I don't want to upgrade to Windows 11. If you do want to upgrade to Windows 11, then that's up to you. But I'm going to ignore that message there but we're looking at the driver updates. You want to go through and download and install the driver updates that are in here as well, because that now brings me on to the next method. And that's to ensure you do have all the latest drivers installed for the hardware in your computer. So you definitely need to ensure that you do have the latest driver installed for your graphics card. I will pop the links in the description below to a couple of the websites where you can get the drivers for say AMD, Nvidia and Intel. If you don't have the latest driver for your graphics card, then that will really make you suffer on frames per second in game. And it can also cause a lot of other issues. Another important piece of hardware in your computer to ensure you have the latest driver installed for is your network adapter. This one's actually overlooked a lot but if you don't have the latest driver installed, then you could be lacking stability and performance with your driver. So download the latest driver from the manufacturer's website for your network adapter or network card, and then it will hopefully help improve your network connection. So once you've done all that and you've updated all the drivers for your hardware in your computer, we can now move on to the next step. And that's to ensure that you are using the best power mode that's on offer in Windows. So you need to right click on the start menu icon and you then need to select settings. You now need to select system and you then need to find power and sleep. Once you're on here, you need to find related settings and click on to additional power settings. You now need to select the high performance power plan option. As you can see, I do have an ultimate performance power plan option. I will pop a link in the description below to our site where we do have a guide on how you can set up this power plan as well, which is actually better than the high performance power plan. But if you don't want to use the ultimate, then like I said, use the high performance power plan. This will make a massive difference when you're playing Call of Duty Vanguard in improving the performance. So the next thing we want to do is ensure you have game mode turned on. So you need to right click on the start menu icon again and go to settings. And this time you need to click onto gaming. And you then need to click onto game mode. As you can see, I currently have game mode on, but you need to toggle this to on if it's off, as this will help optimize windows to make your games run a lot better. And while we're in the gaming settings area, you now need to click onto the Xbox game bar and you need to toggle this to off. So you won't be able to use the Xbox game bar now, but this can also help improve the performance in Vanguard. 
if you do like using the Xbox Game Bar and you're willing to make the sacrifice in performance, then you can keep this option on. That's just up to you. So we now need to close down settings and we need to open up the start menu. And this time you need to type in performance. We're now looking for the adjust the appearance and performance of Windows option. If it's not popping up for you, then type in adjust the appearance and performance of Windows and open this up. You now need to select the visual effects tab and you then need to click on adjust for best performance. As you can see, it's now unticked all the boxes. We can press apply and OK and that will also make a big difference when it comes to making Windows more optimized for Vanguard. So now we've done all that, we want to open up the start menu and type in disk cleanup. You now need to open up the disk cleanup and select your C drive. And you now need to select everything within this area here that you're happy to clean up. So just keep in mind that this will permanently delete the files so you will not be able to get those files back again. So a few options I would recommend that you do clear up definitely is the DirectX shader cache. We also want to do the delivery optimization files. If you go down more, temporary files is a very good one to do as well. And like you can see on my computer, it's taking up over three gig of space. So once you have selected your options, I'm going to deselect the temporary files because that will take a while to do on my computer. We can then go ahead and press OK and then click on to delete files. Once this cleanup has finished doing its thing, we now want to defrag our computer. So this is going to optimize our computer, all the files and make things run a lot better. I'm just going to close, oh, that actually finished anyway. So we need to open the start menu and type in defrag. You then need to click on defragment and optimize drives. We now need to go through each hard drive and click on optimize. My first drive is my C drive. I need to click on optimize and as you can see, it's now optimizing my drive. I have got an SSD for my C drive. So it's up to you if you want to optimize your solid state drive, that's at your own risk. They do recommend that you do not optimize an SSD. So I will leave that at your own choice but hard disk drives are absolutely fine. So I'm going to optimize that one there as well, my E drive. As you can see, it's now analyzing and then it will do the optimization. Once you have finished optimizing your drives, we can now move on to the next step. And that's to ensure hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is turned on. Not every graphics card will support this option. So if the option is missing for you, then that unfortunately means you cannot turn this option on. To enable this option, all we need to do is right click on the start menu icon and we then need to click on settings. We then need to click on gaming and you now need to select game mode and then click on graphic settings under related settings. You will now see an option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling if your graphics card supports it you need to toggle this to on. You now need to restart your PC to apply the changes. That's everything now done for optimizing Windows. We now need to go ahead and boot up Vanguard and we will go through a few of the graphics settings. Once you have launched Vanguard, the first thing you need to do is go ahead and launch into a game and just see how much of a difference changing the settings within Windows has made to Vanguard and you should have noticed a difference in the frame rate and performance. We can now go back to the main menu and we now need to select settings. And you have now hopefully got a better idea of what sort of settings you will need to change within the graphics tab. As you can see, I currently have the graphics tab open and we're on display. You need to change the display mode to full screen. You now need to change the display resolution only if you are really struggling with the FPS still in Vanguard. So the lower the resolution you use, the better the performance will be in the game. But it can also reduce the quality of the game, which means you don't want to go too low on the resolution. I am currently using 1920 by 1080, but I could easily go down to probably... I could use maybe 1600 by 
1024 and that shouldn't make too much of a difference. If I select this option here and press apply, you can see that the settings page right now hasn't really taken too much of an effect there. So if I was to go into game now, I will notice a bit of a difference, but it's not going to be too much of a difference. Just play around with the display resolution until you find a lower resolution that still looks all right on your display. Once you have finished playing around with the resolution, go ahead and jump into another game and see how much of a difference it has made. If it has made a difference and you are happy with the difference, then you can keep the quality settings as the same. Also, you might have noticed in the top left hand corner, I can see my FPS. So if you click onto interface tab at the top, and if you then scroll down, you will see the FPS counter. You need to toggle this to shown, and then you will be able to see how much of an increase you're getting in FPS when playing around with the settings. We can now go back to the graphics tab, and we now need to select quality. So the first setting we are going to take a look at in quality is the render resolution. As you can see, mine is currently set to 100. I wouldn't go any lower than 90 when it comes to the render resolution, because if you change it any lower than 90, then the game will become really pixelated and blurry. But reducing the render resolution can really help with the performance in game and help increase that FPS. If I press apply, you will notice that on the right hand side here, where it says estimated VRAM usage, the bar has just gone down. So we do not want to have this bar near the maximum. At the moment, where my bar is, that is about the right position. You want to have it just about that much of a distance between the bar and max. If you go up to the max, then you will experience performance issues within Vanguard. So the next thing we want to do to help get that bar down is take a look at a few of the details and textures. So the first option we have is texture resolution. You can go ahead and tone this down slightly to either low or medium, or if you're really struggling, go down to very low, but that will make the game not look as good. So I'd recommend to go with about medium. We then have the next option here, which is to do a texture filtering. We can tone this to very low if you want. It doesn't make too much of a difference, I personally think anyway. We then have the particle quality level. So this is another one that we can tone down a bit, but it doesn't have that much of an impact on the VRAM. As you can see now, the VRAM usage bar has gone down a lot, which means my game will run extremely well and I should get a really high frames per second when I'm in game now. So the main two that really made a difference here were these two options here for the texture resolution and texture filter. So if I put the texture resolution back up, you can see going from high to medium has made a massive difference on the VRAM usage. So if we keep going down now, we have particle resolution, which will also make a bit of an impact as well. So if I put this to low, you can see the bar moved a bit as well. Bullet impact spray, you don't really need that on, so you can turn that off. If we go to shader quality, this will have a little bit of an impact, but not too much. If I change it from high to low, you can see there the bar's not really moved at all. So we can keep this option on high. If we then go down a little bit more, we can now change this one from nearby down to off. Level of detail distance range, you want to change this to standard, but if you really are struggling and you don't have a good graphics card, then you will want to change this to short. But really, you want to have it on standard. The next option we have nearby level of detail. So this is the quality of objects and stuff that are near you. If we change this down to low, that's absolutely fine. The next option we have distant level of detail yet again we can change this to low as well if we now go down a little bit more we have clutter draw distance we can just change this to low and basically rocks and things like that won't appear on your screen until you are pretty close to them if we go down a little bit more we have the volumatic quality level you want to change this to medium 
If we now scroll down more, we have shadow and lighting. So shadow and lighting really does have an impact on the VRAM usage. You will notice now. The first option we have screen space shadows. You don't really need shadows on, so I would recommend you turn this off if you really are struggling. If you're not struggling that bad with the frames per second, then you can always put this to local shadows only. If we now go down a little bit more, we then have shadow map resolution. Keep this one on medium, or if you're really, really struggling, then change it to very low. And this will have a massive difference on your VRAM usage as well. As you can see there, the bar's going up and down a lot when I change this setting. I'm going to keep this one on medium. Sun shadow cascades. You don't really need this one on unless you do like the sunlight shadows. But yet again, this can have quite an impact on your graphics card. And I would recommend you put this to low. Cache sun shadows. You want to ensure that you have this option turned on. The next option as well, cache spot shadows. You want to make sure this option's on. As for the spot cache size, you want to change this to high. If we now scroll down a bit more, we then have the spot shadow quality. Change this down to low. Particle lighting, you can change this to about medium. And then for the ambient option, you want to turn this off. If we now scroll down more, we have the screen space reflection. You want to turn this off as well. And if we go down more, you have a few more settings. But the setting we want to go for here is the anti-aliasing option. You need to turn this to SMAA T2X. And then for the final option, the VRAM usage target, you need to change this to 90%. Once you have changed all that, go ahead and press apply settings and jump into game. And you should see a massive improvement in the performance and also the frame rate in Vanguard. So I hope you enjoyed this video and it helped you out. Like I said at the start of the video, if you want to see more videos on how to improve the performance in games and resolve issues with games, then hit the subscribe button below. And if this video did help you out, then hit the like button below as well. I will see you all in the next video.